What's up guys, I'm Dr. Parker. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to and everything you need to change the oil in a Ford Raptor R. This thing has a supercharged 5.2 liter V8 and it takes 11 and a half quarts of 5W50. You're also gonna need a 10 millimeter socket, a T40 wrench, a nine millimeter extension, a filter part number 57502, and I found it really easy to use an oil filter cap wrench. This one is 76 millimeters in size. For a few extra dollars, you can get a brand new oil drain plug. The reason why this would be important is because they have a built-in O-ring. Unlike traditional vehicles that use a copper washer, the O-ring is actually built into these oil drain plugs. I'd also recommend getting one that has a magnetic tip. That way, next time you go to do your oil change, you can see if there's any metal debris stuck to it. In order to take this oil drain plug out, you're going to need a 15 millimeter socket. I've made it really easy for you if you go in the description below on my Amazon storefront has everything you're going to need to be able to do this yourself at home. Let's dive right into it. The first step is going to be warming that engine up to temperature. I found it easy to know if you're at temperature by hitting menu on your steering wheel and then scrolling down to Raptor information. Once at Raptor information you scroll down to my gauges and as you can see, our coolant temperature is 161 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's gonna be perfect for draining our oil. I found it easiest to put the front end of the truck on these race ramps. Lucky for you though, if you don't have these race ramps, the truck's high enough that you can just do it straight on the ground without any jacks. Once you have your truck in a position where you can work on it, the hood latch is located on the driver's side kicker panel right here. Anytime I'm draining my oil, I always take the filler cap off. And I believe that this vents the engine and allows the oil to drain more efficiently. In order to access the oil drain plug, you're gonna have to remove this panel that's located right next to the passenger side front tire. In order to remove this panel, you remove three bolts that require a 10 millimeter socket. Once you have access to the oil drain plug, you can use a 15 millimeter socket to remove it. Now that I have this oil drain plug out of the truck, this is the old one and this is the new one. If you could see, Closely, this rubber washer is kind of flattened out here versus this one is slightly protruding. So that's why, you know, like I said earlier, just a couple extra bucks to replace this is, is worth it instead of your oil leaking out and you having a catastrophic engine failure from loss of oil. Once you make sure your oil pan is free of debris, you can replace your oil drain plug and then it's time to access the oil filter. The oil filter can be accessed by removing these four T40 torque bolts. The oil filter sits in a pretty tough position on the front of the engine, just to the driver's side of the crank pulley. So putting a nine inch extension on this oil filter socket, I found it really easy to use these Chris Fix extendable ratchets. And as you see, getting this extra length here, being able to extend that ratchet is gonna make a di big difference for this oil change. After freeing up the oil filter with some tools, it's best to unscrew it by hand. As you can see, I'm reaching up through the access hole on the skid plate, but be careful, there's oil that's going to drip out of the skid plate in this little square right here. You're gonna notice the overall height difference in the filter I recommend versus the one from Ford, but that's okay. The Wix filter part number that I recommend is 57502, and it fit flawlessly. Now this engine takes a lot of oil. The owner's manual calls for 11 and a half quarts of Motorcraft 5W50. I started off by putting in 11 quarts before adding another half a quart and checking my oil level along the way. Once I was comfortable enough with the amount of oil that was in there, I then ran the truck and looked for leaks, made sure that the oil pressure was sufficient before topping off again to meet the standard oil level. After I was happy that there was sufficient oil in the machine, it had been run up to temperature, and that it was making sufficient oil pressure, I then replaced the access panels on the skid plate and got to the next item in the protocol of proper maintenance on a Ford Raptor R, which is to rotate the tires every single time an oil change is completed. In order to complete a tire rotation, you use a 13th, 16th socket with an impact and a torque wrench, torque them back on. So in order to do this on a rear wheel drive truck, we're gonna move the rear tires forward and the forward tires back while crossing them. So while I removed the tires, I thought it'd be a neat touch to get them cleaned up. 
I always think it's a nice touch to clean your tires from the inside because we're always dressing the outside when we're at the car wash or doing it at home, but it's nice to get all the brake dust off the inside of the rim. So I like this product called Bleach White. I scrubbed the inside of the wheel with a soft Scotch-Brite pad, pressure washed it all off, and as you can see, it cleans up pretty nice in comparison to the wheel that hasn't been cleaned. The video doesn't do it too much justice, but you can see on this wheel that I haven't cleaned yet, which is the left rear, pretty dirty. Versus the wheel that I have cleaned, I mean, you could eat off that. That makes a big difference. It's just these little touches when you're doing projects like this. It takes an extra 10 minutes, but always worth it. If you're a Raptor R owner, you know that these wheels are an absolute nightmare to clean. So I found that using a cheap toilet bowl scrubber gets into all the nooks and crannies really well when cleaning these wheels. So in order to rotate the tires properly, we're gonna remove the rear tires forward, and then we're gonna take the front tires and cross them and move them backwards. And that's gonna be the proper way to rotate a vehicle that is rear wheel drive. When I put the wheels and tires back on, I always apply anti-seize to the lug nuts before torquing back on with an impact. I have my impact set at the lowest setting, and then I lower the truck down off the jack so it's sitting on the ground and torque them to first 100 foot pounds before then going back around and torquing them to 150 foot pounds. It's always good to go for a drive and then retorque them. But if you guys want to purchase anything needed to do a proper maintenance on a Ford Raptor R, check out my Amazon storefront. I've got everything on there from the sockets you need to the oil, to the oil drain plug, oil filters, oil filter wrench. Everything you need is right there. So go check it out and make it easier on yourself.